Mrs. Igdal, what happened in July? July it was just to bend through. They packed us in the uh, cattle uh, trains, the cattle cart. Fifty people in uh, one train, in one car. And they carried us the way to Stuttgart. But when they came in Tells, that was also Lithuania. T-E-L-Z, Tells. Then they told us to get out all of us, the 50 people, the 50 women. Can you tell me about the cattle car ride? How long did it last? It last, I believe, a couple of days until we got the Stuttgart. Can you describe what that was like for you? It was awful bad, packed up. We didn't have water. We didn't have where to get out. It was just screaming and howling and crying. It once they came to our car and they started to open up the door and they asked us, all of us, to come out. We came out. They carried us to a place. It looked like a big store with big windows like you got here, cars here in the windows. They asked us to undress. What was in the window? A big window, a big room, a big window. Like here in America, they're keeping the cars in. Keeping cars in? Right. They ask us to undress, to strip off all the clothes. We thought they going to shoot us. We stripped off all the clothes and then filled up of people, German and Lithuanian, looking at us through the windows. We were not ashamed. Let them be ashamed what they're doing to us. Then they told us in a few minutes to get dressed again. They took us back to the cattle car. And then they rolled us to Stuttgart. Do you know why they did that? No. To the day we don't know why. It was just a joke. When you thought they were going to shoot you, what was going through your mind? Nothing. We want to be, we want to end it up. We knew sooner or later we would be in the same place ended. We didn't believe that they believe one Jew. We didn't believe that. May the son will survive, it will be a miracle. And it was a miracle that some survived. Were you praying as you were taking off very your clothes? Very much, very much. Not praying. All the people, the screaming and the crying, it was too bad, too terrible. So they put you back into the cattle car? Right. Were you able to sleep in the cattle car? No, it wasn't a, be able to because it was one on top of the other. What happened Just next? pushed together. Where did they take and you? And we traveled the whole day. We came to the dark. They traveled in, in a place between wood. I don't know where that was. In the beginning we didn't know. After then we knew it stood off. And from one side, the, the woods, from the other side, the woods, but the shooting was terrible. They unloaded us. I don't know how to call in here. What do you call them? You have to unload a car with coal in, in the small wagons, the small can, the, the, the cars. I don't know. Then loud uh, the coal, and it's such a small little wagon, but it rolls on, on the, on the, like a train. And they packed the people to three to four with all the stuff that they still had left. Very little. They brought us to a place that was awful huge. Awful huge. When we got in, in there, it was already the thousands and thousands of people. Everybody laying on the floor with the packages for the head and we too. We stood through the night. If you want to go to, uh, to a toilet, it wasn't toilets. It was a in the same big room was a big hall, and everybody had to go around the hall, a child or a man or a woman, it doesn't matter where, or an old person, if you fell in, it was all right. If you got out, you were all right too. It was awful filthy and awful dirty. On tomorrow morning, they say the men threat on. He says the men should come out, and the children and the old men. Everybody should come out from the men park. Everybody came to the places where they told them to come to the end of the building. And they took away the men. Where they took away the men, we didn't know it. 
after them it came the line to take the women. They called us. They told us they have to take us to an enclosing first. They brought us to a place. When we got in, they told us to drop the bags the first room. We dropped it. Who's they? The SS people. Were there any women? SS women? It was women and men. We have to drop everything. We have to stay out the hands like that. We have to undress. We undressed. The second room, when they sent us in, they told us to go, like you're going here to get exams from a doctor. They had to examine if you hide something in the body. Who examined you? The same thing, the men and the women. Did a man or a woman examine you? A man. A SS man with the big dogs. And then they told us to get in the tap room. Uh, they, how, how, what was that like? How did he it, treat you? What did he say to you? Nothing. Nothing. We didn't have nothing what to talk about. We were just like animals. We knew that's the end because what, they, what else they going to do with us? Then when we got in, in the third room, it was awful filthy, awful rusty, a little bit water. Just a spray, a spray with water, and out, 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 out. We got out the doors. That's what the scary part came. We saw so many shoes, mountains, so much clouds. Mountains with clouds. Each one stood women. They troll everybody a pair of shoes, a coat, a, a blanket, no underwear, no nothing. Run, 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 one after the other. We run and then they brought us to a barrack. The barracks, it was also three lines where to sleep, up, middle, down. And we start to cry, the first thing we sit down. Everybody, the heads lay down, cried, cried, what's going to happen now to us. Start to exchange, you know, my shoes is too small, I cannot put on my feet. Oh, my is too big. Then we used to change up. Or a dress, one couldn't wear, it was too big, the other one too small. Then we changed up. But the couch we used to keep because we were cold. And the same thing, the blankets we kept. The same day, when they took out all the women to line up in lines, we saw already in another lot the men, but we couldn't recognize them. They were already in straight links, stripes, gray shoes with a, a stripe, like a blue one, and the same thing, round caps like the... French people, the military, were there. Around here, then one says to me, there is Israel, there is Israel. Then I could hear them only screaming, Riva, wait for me, wait for me, but I didn't saw me anymore. They carried the men to Dachau. The children they took away, the old people they took away, and then they sent us to our barracks. And we had to stay for days. It took seven days until they gave us, sent us for work. In and out, early in the morning, out from the barracks. We used to stay in the hot sun. Couldn't stand up on our feet. Couldn't bend. Couldn't go to a toilet. If they want to urinate, you had to urinate on yourself. Didn't have nothing to clean up. If a girl had a menstruation, it was too terrible. We used to dig with our feet. We could see pictures. We could see hair in the ground, in the, in the sand. But we are not allowed to pick up. From? But we used to stay outdoors. But the hair and the pictures was from whom? From other people. Who had worked in the camp? Who was already killed. That was our mind, and that's what we figured out. About what date, where are we about now in time? Okay. That was already by end of 44, because from there we went already in the last camps. But when we passed by one couple barracks, and when we saw trucks are carrying out people, just sticks, we could only recognize it was a head, and it had feet, one kept for the feet. 
one kept for the head and they throw in the in the trucks. They were dead? It was already dead people. Were they from your called, camp? And that called the hospital. Now that was in Stutthof. And we stood outdoors. But that was a few barracks from us. A, a couple of doors from us. But we could see that. Because we stood with the face in this side. When we would stay with the face that side, we couldn't see it. But when we stood like that, and looked and then we saw the trucks coming in and going to the barracks where they called the hospital. It was not a hospital. It was just a couple of barracks. And then they took out dead people, just skeletons. Do you know what they did with their bodies? No, we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. We were not allowed to talk. We were not allowed to say nothing. And then one day they came and they started to take people to work. 300 here, 400 there, we were glad already to get out. Then they carried us in the hot sun to dig the trenches for the soldiers. And that was our work until the day when it came the dead march. Do you know about how much you weighed at this point? We weighed it by 70 pounds a piece, 75 pounds a piece, not anymore. We were very skinny very filthy. I had to cut down my, my, my uh, plates because the lice used to eat us up. They used to sleep in the cardboard around huts, 50 women on straw, one on top of the other, round and round, one on top of the other. And the lice used to go from one to the other, terrible on the arms, everywhere, everywhere. Red. The whole body red. Some used to get up in the morning. Some when they tried to wake him up, shake him, shake him, come on. We got to go to work. You couldn't even wake him up. They were dead. And you had to leave him out there. When they used to come back, they didn't find him anymore. And so we made through the concentration, the, 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 the Stutthof. Even I got a, a girlfriend in San Francisco. She lived, she says, if not I, she wouldn't ever leave. Golda Russian. What's her last name? Russian. R-A-I-S-I-N. And why did Golda. she? Golda. G-O-L-D-A. How she. did you help her to live? How I helped her, what we could do, one for the other we did. And when she met my husband, it was the, for, the first time in the Washington when they opened up the Holocaust. I couldn't go. My sister was sick after her. The Holocaust Museum? Yeah. My husband went. And when she found the Gdowskis, they lived together in the same place. And when she saw Irving, they didn't know what to do one with the other. And I had made up the mind to go with her together and to see the Holocaust in 1992, I believe. But at the time, my husband took sick. She went with my daughter, Frida. She came to Washington. You said that then they came to take you out for the death march. Right. At the time, where did you think you were going? We thought they came us to kill somebody because we knew that they were not going to work. They had none more and more and more groups. They rushing us, they screaming at us, they're awful mad. We could hear airplanes over our heads. And they just, they told us, if one will turn around, there they got up. I went out with two sister-in-laws and my sister, but the two sister-in-laws, one, they sat. And one escaped, but she went out to Ill a little bit, and they sat there anyway. And they got until the evening. In the evening, when they came to a big uh, barn and a big restaurant, and they tried to keep the people together because they scared the people will escape, then they rushed everything and everybody in the barn. But so many they pushed in, it wasn't place for the rest little bit people. And we but crying and thinking we don't have a place where to get in. We saw a little barn which opened the door. Who's we? I, my sister, and four more girls. Which sister? 
my sister Anne, what is here, lives uh, in a burg, but lives on 158 Hall Street. We got in, in the barn with sure leather. We got up on top. We got up in the hay. We pulled up the leather. And we said, from here, we are not going nowhere. Life or dead. Like that, we will stay here. Not that we're going anymore. We didn't go. We laid up there. It was very cold. It was winter, January. January is already in our place. Very cold, deep snow. But walk in the snow, more stuck on the shoes, on the clocks. You had to cut them up, cut them up, cut them up, and go quick. In another way, you would, you would be sad. We laid up there for uh, four days, and after them, one day, we had on the bottom, it came in German people. They want to put up for themselves a place. Then they start to talk, we can speak German, we can understand German. You that could they, understand oh, German. sure. And whom did you My think they were running from? Whom were they hiding from in your mind? They didn't hide nowhere. They want to put up a location to have closer for their uh, military people. They were talking, they going up upstairs, they will take uh, up straw for the horses to put on, on the bottom, and they their plans, everything. They were talking what they going to do, how they going to put up the stage and everything. In the meantime, with once, one came in, a higher rank, and he said they have to leave. They have to leave quick. Life mustn't be a house game. Life. Then we were happy to hear that kind of words. Then maybe not reach upstairs. And we thought, we were so big. All the six days what we were up there, we lived only from the candle, what it used to, from the roof. The water used to leak, and uh, and the, it forms an icicle, like you say, like a candle. It used to break up. Didn't go nowhere. You had to urinate under your cell. We laid up there. And on the 19th, one girl, afternoon, she says... On the 19th? On the 25th. Of January? The 19th, we hide ourselves. Of January? January, 1945. 1945. Right. And uh, she says she believes she hears a Russian song, Katyusha. It was a beautiful song. We try to listen. And everybody from us just, I believe too, I believe too. And the Russian people came to the same place. And between was a Jewish major. Then one girl, she spoke very good Russian. She started to call. They took something to get up up there. They got up and they took us up all the six. We paid it 60, 65 pounds apiece, not anymore. The so Russian soldiers climbed up on the barn right. and carried you six Get girls down. Out. How and did you know the major was Jewish? He told us after that. He was so good. He was so good, he was good like old. Tell me what he said. He took us in. He made us to, to take off the clothes. He didn't go with us. He made us to wash ourselves. He brought water. He where? brought food. Where did you wash yourself? In the, in the same in the in that uh, where the barn was and the restaurant was was clothes a home. He carried us in in the home. In the warm. A home. Home. A home. You see, the the Polish people had left the village. They scared because the Russian come and close up. They scared. Then they left the village, then the homes were empty. He brought us in a good home. It was plenty of food, we couldn't eat. How did the Russian soldiers treat you? In the beginning it was fine. But just a day two, they got drunk. When they bring, they don't bring a small uh, bottle of uh, whiskey. They bring the big cans, like in here, they can the milk cans. 25 liters, or how many, in a can. And uh, before we got all cleaned and dressed, and I'd gone out nowhere, just crying, crying. We are strange, we don't know where we are. We cannot follow the language. 
how far they are from home. We don't have money how to reach somewhere. Maybe we are the most survivors. Why we had to survive? Why Hitler didn't kill us? Why we had to be the ones to tell people that we survived? And then the major came with me, and he started to talk to us, not to mention his name. The major came the in? The major. The Jewish major? The Jewish major. He, he told you he, not to mention his name? Not to mention that he's Jews. So his Russian soldiers did not know? Not know. What did but he did so many good things. He brought in clothes, he brought in food. He made everybody to wash off. He looked at the house that everybody should eat. He told the soldiers they should look after us to eat, to drink, and in a few days he had to leave. When the Russian soldiers got drunk, how did they in treat the morning, you girls? In the one evening, one girl overheard that tomorrow they're going to have a party. They're going to take each girl and they will make them drunk and they will sleep with them. And before they came from the work, all six of us, we got in in another barn. It was awful huge up there. I bet my life there was plenty German hiding up there too. Cows, chickens, pigs, horses, all the screaming with no food. We hide up there. And after them, we stood up the whole night up there and we looked through our little windows. On tomorrow morning, when we saw they left with the trucks, with everything, we got him back in the home. Where was the Jewish major when this was the happening? The Jewish major had left. Then it came in another group, again soldiers. Then we knew already we have to watch for that kind of soldiers. One moment, Mrs. Igdal. Did the Jewish major ever tell you his name? He told us, but I cannot recall. Do you remember a first name? No. Cannot recall. It came in another group, and the other group, we saw that one got to be, he had a Jewish heart. He cried so much when he saw us. He said, you are the first people, the same thing the major told us. You are the first people we see. We haven't seen a Jewish person. Then after we cried so much, he says, you know, I'm going to tell you something, but please don't repeat. They called me Misha, but my name is Moshe. That means he's a Jewish boy. So another Russian soldier was Jewish? A soldier. We hugged them, we kissed them, we told them, please take us somewhere, take us out from here, because here and the baby are lost. We don't have nothing, we don't have where to go, we don't know, no language, nothing. He says, okay, tomorrow morning he will come with a truck. He brought a reporter, he took off all the stories, a reporter. Stores must be in Russia. And he told us to get in all in the truck. And he carried us in, in, uh, in, uh, to Lublin. That is already where the Jewish big cities used to be. What was the name of the city? Lublin. L U B L I N. When we slept over up there, when tomorrow morning, there was already escapers, Jewish people. They looked around already, escaped from the partisans, Jewish people, were already in Lublin. And they start to check around in different places. And must be he knew where to carry us, because it brought us to a place that we could come in contact with other Jewish people. And from there it started up other stories. But he saved our life that he brought us to Jewish people. Did you see any Germans? No. No. So what did you know about your liberation? When liberation, did you 
consider we yourself liberated? We, we traveled around from one place to the other. The more they send us from Lublin, we went, I believe, to Warsaw. From Warsaw, it had to do more people. They send us, we were in, uh, in uh, Budapest. From Budapest, I believe it was in, uh, in uh, Ludus. That was in uh, Hungary. In Hungary, they, uh, the Jewish people made a kibbutz, like in Israel, a kibbutz. So this is after the war? After the war. You I say they sent sort. you. They, who's I make, they? I make short. When that Misha brought us to people who survived, the dead people had already a hand over us. They gave us already places where to go, how to get to there. One time they put us up long clouds with scarves over the head. They put us on a train. But how did you get well? How did you get food to gain your weight back? How we got food again the day the first holiday, Easter, that was in Lublin when we had a say that we had matzah. People used to give us. Jewish people, non Jewish people? Jewish people from the partisan. Came a lot from the partisan people, not non Jews, Jewish people. We didn't mm. need matzah, a piece of bread. Even a piece of bread and garlic was enough for us a meal. When did you start to think about the rest of your family and where they were? In Grodno, that was also in the Polis, Polis places. We said, we're going home. We want to go home. But you had to register to go home. Grodno, E-G-R-O-D-N-O. And we stood up on the walls in the hundreds of people to register to go home. Everybody in another direction. And in the meantime, people who survived already and went to went home, they came back and they recognized some what was standing to the wall to register to go home. Then they called in Jewish language kinder, children. We are so glad to see you because a couple recognized from Sherlai, a couple of sisters, a Ringermacher. They say you survived. You know what they're going to take you? They're going to take you to Siberia. Escape. Get in, in the bomb buildings. We will find you. We escaped one by one. All six of us. We got in. In the bomb buildings, I remember I stood up and in the meantime I took myself time to take out the lies and just to kill the lies. And then people came, they picked us up. They give us a place where to stay. Until we reached from place to place. What, what people? Jewish people. The ones who came out from the partisans. When they came out, they had their homes, they had their places. We didn't have nothing. And uh, we came to, uh, to uh, Budapest, where they had a, a kibbutz, made up a kibbutz, a few hundred people. From Jews from where? From all over. And after the kibbutz, we reached Vienna, Austria. In Vienna, Austria, we went in, in the Bricha. The Bricha, did you spell that? Yeah. Bricha, B R uh, E, to say in this uh, uh, um, she H O. And the Bricha was? Plenty Jewish people. I just show you the pictures. But what kind of organization was it? It was an organization to help other people to escape to Israel, to get over the border. We're going to stop here for a tape change. <laughs>